Welcome, everyone. Um, uh, my name is Platon Isaias. I'm the program head of Projective Cities and Fill in Urban Design and Architecture at the AA. Um, we're super excited to uh, launching this uh, lecture series uh, in term two. Um, we will start this first um, uh, presentation with uh, Lacole and Christina Gamboa from from the from the group. Um, I don't want to say much about uh, the lecture and, and Christina. I just want to give a, a brief introduction about uh, what is the, the the logic behind this series. I mean, we we wanted to um, open up a conversation, or if you want to contribute to a conversation that we have in the school about um, uh, practice and about new uh, and emerging pedagogical models. I think. The, there are other things as well in the school that are dwelling into this same uh, similar problematics. Um, so we we wanted to to uh, somehow give our own take uh, into this uh, question: what is you know the intersection between uh, architectural design, architectural practice, uh, education, uh, pedagogy of architecture, and also forms of uh, collaboration, forms of uh, uh, relating with other disciplines and, and communities as well. Um, I will uh, leave it here. We will, the series will run every uh, Monday. I think we have uh, uh, always at 1 p.m. manager, if I'm, if I'm not wrong. Uh, we have one, uh, we're starting with Lacol today, then Next week, with, uh, we have Alejandra Celedon. The following week, uh, Nora uh, uh, Akawi uh, and Eduardo Rego. And then we take a break and we start again in mid February for three more lectures with uh, Chris Lee, uh, Plan Common, and uh, Tram Novel. Um, Christina, um, the floor is, is, is yours. Uh, uh, I'm really happy that you are with us uh, today. Thank you very much, Platon. It's it's a real pleasure to start the series, and um, I will share I will share my screen. Can you see it? Uh, everything is fine. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. So. Um, uh, the title is community infrastructures, and uh, basically, um, this title this title came came from uh, what we have defined as our aim after almost ten years of working uh, together, um, first as association, uh, as a students, and after in two thousand four to start the, the cooperative. Basically, we define as a community infrastructure as a series of kind of devices mechanisms and a mode of operation that has uh, the goal to establish um, protocols for a sustainable living. And we define these infrastructures as a key tool for eco-social transition uh, through architecture, of course, cooperativism as a set of values and uh, participation. And of course, as a, one of the first infrastructures as is the local itself, um, uh, where uh, 14 uh, students uh, in a certain moment finishing our, our studies uh, establish uh, or rent a space in the ground floor in the middle of the neighborhood of Sands. And basically it's interesting because precisely local um, start and consolidate itself as a refusal to the to the pedo, like to the model of architecture that um, we were receiving in in Barcelona, in a certain moment uh, in 2009 2010, in the moment that we were kind of finishing our studies, in uh, almost kind of the age of this economical uh, crisis, we were uh, aiming to to understand architecture as a political tool, uh, quite far from the Barcelona model that um, was established from the 90s. And basically, uh, with this space, uh, we were trying to look for an alternative uh, to, the, to the final project, trying to uh, make a stronger relation with the territory, with us, well, like with the city and the neighborhoods. And uh, through different case studies in, in the uh, neighborhood of Sands, we established this relationship. So uh, nowadays, um, as I was saying, almost 
10 years uh, later. Lacol is a cooperative uh, of architects. Uh, so basically a cooperative for those for those who uh, doesn't know it, it's a people-centered enterprise owned, controlled and run by its uh, members. And basically to realize together a common economic, social, cultural needs and aspiration. And in the case of Lacol and in the middle of the economical crisis set and started the, this cooperative was basically uh, a way to dignify uh, the, the, our profession kind of feel uh, and uh, starting a set of relations and uh, a ways to understand the role of the architect in the society in, a, in an alternative uh, way. Um, as uh, nowadays, we are organized in two areas, Lacol, which uh, one area is kind of the more conventional, we, we, get, we can say it, kind of which aims to like the architectural development of the projects to, to build itself, this, these structures. Uh, the second one, uh, which is focused to these networks and these infrastructures, basically is uh, trying to boost uh, uh, projects, implementing policies, participatory process, um, articulating the social economy and the cooperative uh, movement and the, all together uh, work for uh, implementing and um, in a way pushing projects like the ones that I want to share today. And all this is uh, possible, as I was saying, because we arrived to the neighborhood of Sands, which is in the outskirts of the of the old city, which was um, a workers' neighborhood, uh, and a neighborhood that uh, started after the, ind the industrial activity was allocated in this area and set a series of cooperative ecosystems, basically spaces and new institutions for the workers to dignify uh, the their conditions. And uh, we learn from those experiences and basically what is happening today in the neighborhood, it's a process of social accumulation and sometimes also the use of the language is quite important. We, we don't like to talk about social innovation uh, in certain moments, but how these um, how the experiences, how the networks, how um, the, the, um, the existing associations uh, are part of this heritage and the seat of this uh, of this um, workers uh, workers um, history. And uh, one of the main projects, and this is why I visited here Cambalho. Cambalho was uh, one of the last and bigger industrial premises in the city of Barcelona, and was the project that three of the members of La Col, um, selected to develop the theoretical uh, academic project. Um, and uh, this is, was the, the way that we became engaged with the neighborhood, with the different neighborhood assemblies, with the project itself and with the different uh, claims. That's because this area was planned to be um, green area, public facilities in the modification of, of the new metropolitan plan. But this was in the 70s, so 30 years um, before. So after this waiting, the neighborhood decided to make a step and to push uh, the municipality for alternative Otherwise, they will uh, start. And that's what happened in June 2011. And precisely was one month uh, later, the 50, uh, 15M, this popular visibilization uh, and political uh, moment in the history of Spain and other um, uh, cities. So this popular power arrived to different neighborhoods and many alternatives started to grow in this moment. So Cambodia became a paradigmatic experience of the city uh, city transformation, a bottom up experience where um, uh, this also, this um, learning from the history, this idea of a cooperative neighborhood uh, started to became from the theory to the practice. And for us architects uh, that we were involved in this assembly as a neighbors in a totally horizontal structure, we get the opportunity to rethought new protocols of provision of architecture, understanding kind of the tools, uh, the, the resources, the skills of the people, understanding the instrumentality of those spaces to generate the community. But the most important thing is the role of the community itself in the management, uh, in the construction management, and decision of all those spaces. So from the first uh, block, the block 11, um, the assembly of Cambalho started the participatory process to decide which uh, needs had the neighborhood. And this was the beginning of the growth of all these kind of um, 
expansion. So it was a process of time, strategy, collective work, and legitimacy of the popular movement that um, introduced a series of projects from health, food, to local economy, uh, activity, housing, and many others. And what was more important is that also introduce certain tools which were new in the city of Barcelona. And basically, the um, Assembly uh, of Camballó and the Neighborhood Association established a contract with the municipality for the management of the area for, for, for 50 years. This was a public cooperative community management and basically um, received the, the name of citizenship heritage. It basically visibilizes also the, the notion that the territory and the, and the, the neighbors also are kind of the um, respond like the active roles and the, and the responsibles of what is happening in the city. And for us, this was uh, a huge learning. And here it's a kind of the second kind of uh, main idea that I wanted also to, to introduce. In one hand, we were looking for alternatives. In the second hand, the the day-by-day the day -day activity and the, the neighborhood and the real um, dynamics that were emerging in, in Campanyo, it was a school for us. So we implemented participatory process and we learned tools. We understood the complexities of the city and its transformation, the different agents and the role that they are playing. And basically we decided to, to develop uh, also participatory process for, um, for the public sector. It's in this moment where we also started to understand kind of the different limits and where we, um, were defining what we uh, understood in these different levels of participation from the consultation to how, in which kind of projects we can get the, the total control uh, by the inhabitants. So, and this idea, the infrastructures that, that I want to present are aiming to understand how uh, society can also emancipate starting to projects that give to themselves the, the control. And this, and the first one, was the cooperative housing project. One of the projects that came from from Camballó, and I like to present as this infrastructure for sustainable living, and how we can politicize politicize the domestic real. And basically, why this project? Because in a popular neighborhood as Sanz and in the city of Barcelona, housing was one of the main needs and conflicts and disputes. So uh, basically, we are a society of owners since the dictatorship where the individual property was introduced and established. And um, we, uh, in Spain and specifically in the city of Barcelona, there were only one, one point. Uh, 1.5 or 2% of social housing, which means that basically the control of the of the prices and the control it is in the in the private sector. So the idea is introduce a model that to increase the affordable uh, housing, and uh, basically as also a way to have access to the right to the city, and the same way to um, deal or to reduce conflicts with, with this instability, such as health, but at the same time, uh, current problems like the energy uh, price, which is nowadays this year is one of the, the most important things, um, uh, it's also on the table. No? And um, again, this idea of a cooperation between Asians and how we can establish these new models present in other countries in in the city of Barcelona. So how um, um, initiatives from the third sector in relation with the state, um, the communities in and the market. And basically this is something that it was common in, in countries such as Denmark, also in the South America, in Uruguay and many others. And basically uh, what we wanted to introduce is this idea of a non-speculative model uh, based on the collective ownership which uh, basically uh, means that the, per the one person is member of the cooperative as a member has uh, the right and a contract of use one of the flats, but um, as they are not uh, the owners, they have not the capacity to resell it or re uh, rent it. So basically the speculation is blocked through this uh, mechanism of ownership. This, of course, also um, has a series of um, parallel uh, characteristics, which basically is a self-managed uh, model. It's aiming to redefine the model of conviviality, the interaction and cooperation in the domestic realm related with the surrounding. 
and uh, basically also having on mind the environmental uh, situation, having on mind how we can have a series of practices to be more sustainable. And this is um, the assembly of Labordo, this first project that came from Campagnolo and became the first uh, housing cooperative uh, developed in the city of Barcelona. And what it was also interesting is this idea of how architecture it's in, goes in parallel to the other axes and vectors in the development model. So since the, the beginning of 2014, we were um, accompanying uh, the, this group, uh, this assembly, in the achievement of the different goals, understanding also how architecture is um, a process to build community. And that's why sometimes we used to say that we build housing to build community, because through the series of workshops uh, about the imaginary, about the model of conviviality, about the different programs, the, the different needs, the environmental goals, et cetera, et cetera, we, um, became, uh, we made the people know each other. We, uh, in a way, strength the sense of community, also solving the conflict, the conflict, but recognizing the other and setting a, a common identity. What is also important is this idea that also there were legal and financial uh, aspects that also had interaction with the architecture and the, the organizational model of the cooperative in a certain moment where also the architecture it, the, or the Lacol as a team were in touch with one of these assembly, these kind of uh, groups, which was uh, the different uh, committee from administration, communication, architecture, um, model of conviviality, economy, uh, the legal system, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, the second kind of um, or the parallel. Uh, architectural or to the architectural structure. It's also the funding structure. And it was also really important for us as architects to realize and recognize how this is working and the impact that the economic from the economy that the cost of the architecture has. So also this was a tool for us, how we can work with the budget and how we can also um, understand um, the pedagogy of, uh, around that and how we can uh, redefine the priorities, the standards, the, what the conventional market establish as essential, but also uh, the regulation. And this is how we start the architecture. And this was also possible because um, the municipality as a, as a kind of a testing uh, project, as a pioneer project, established uh, a leasehold of a public land to the cooperative for 75 years. So Labordo is uh, developing, building and manage and managing uh, social and public housing. So the first start was kind of this recognition of the user. So this is a self-managed project and they also ask to be really present in the architectural definition. So um, the first step was this survey, this um, Yes, this categorization and also recognition of the of the needs and the and the characteristics of the community. So through different kind of uh, mechanisms, understanding um, the configuration, but also uh, other information linked to the economy. So the incomes of the family, the different uh, dynamics. But and for example, here one of some of the main. Uh, or some kind of the singular uh, data that was important for us is the idea of the variation of the typologies. So as a, as of a, as a, a recognition of the diversity of the society, these problems of um, the, the, like the previous, the former situation of the families where they have with they had problems in the housing context of Barcelona to pay the rents, but also to pay the energy. And it was also a visibilization that there are certain problems such as energy poverty that many of them were suffering, but even they didn't know it. So it's also a process of, um, of kind of, uh, of giving knowledge of our, the recognition of themselves about their uh, own situation and other kind of information which it was really important for the project such as the the mobility the if they were owning the car because all this also allows to challenge the current regulations to set precedents and changes in the regulations for the future of um, the housing stock in, in Barcelona. The second uh, thing, and I will go really fast, is basically to define this model of conviviality and how um, 
this was an opportunity also to redefine which is the collective housing program, which are the different levels of interaction between the user, but also even the surrounding um, with Cambalio, with the neighborhood and the different facilities and the spaces that they have, and which it was uh, essential. It was this work done with the model of conviviality committee, which was um, a creation of scenarios and understanding the impacts of all these spaces in terms of environment for performance, for example, and in terms of um, the reduction of the energy or economical cost, but also in terms of the social impact, where, for example, in the case of the, of the kitchen, the distribution of the labor in terms of gender uh, in Spain was uh, put on the table. So it was also an idea to recognize um, how this, uh, all the spaces can transform and how the daily practices are really a transformative tool for the society and for the community. And the second step was the definition of the environmental goals in terms of energy, water, materials, and, and the waste. And of course, based on the way of the of the budget, we uh, we couldn't arrive to the maximum in terms of all the goals. But we focus our energy in the reduction of the energy demand, but also in the reduction of the of the materials. As the construction, as all we know, has a huge impact in terms of environment, um, the community wanted to build in a in a in a different in a different way, and that's why we will see it. We introduce the wood um, structure. So basically, through different simulations in terms of that they are in, in during the project, but also since the building is uh, inhabited through different monitoring, we uh, are able to have an estimation, but also to report nowadays the reduction of all this energy uh, in the in La Borda. So how we fulfill like the, the the goals, but also how we can implement even changes to for the for improving the, the behavior. And um, what even nowadays, uh, as I was saying, because the Spanish energy market is totally a kind of um, discontrolled, the cost uh, of the energy and this reduction also makes affordable the comfort and the housing um, in, in this kind of projects. So uh, basically, once established all these parameters from the social to the economical to the collective, uh, we started to define the, the project. In this case, it was this plot in between walls with a fantastic south facade. So basically, we densified the south facade. We generate this courtyard. Uh, we uh, set an envelope. It is um, this uh, greenhouse on the top in order to make compact uh, in terms of the facade. And what it was also really important is this transition from the public space through this passage that also connects the neighborhood with the park, with Cambalio. But also, it was the beginning of this um, of this connection with these different common areas that we have in the first floor, in the ground floor, in the first floor, arriving to the corridors and and the courtyard that connects with the private um, units. And this is this is the environmental um, scheme, which is, uh, as I was saying, um, also one of the kind of the um, I would say the main ideas uh, behind the general configuration of the building, you know, this environmental performance. And here we can just see how with this, this uh, how the densification of the south facade having 45 out of 28, 24 out of 28 flats, this uh, atrium that is working as a collective uh, energy saver in winter, totally closed, in summer uh, open, for, like that works as a chimney and um, having the cross uh, ventilation and also allocating in the ground and in the ground floor and in the first floor, these common spaces that need a level of uh, um, a reduced level of comfort in comparison with the units. So, and the, the next step was to work with the community, the different needs through life and in the current moment, understanding that also the needs of the community will change through time and how we can, uh, how we could uh, uh, develop a structure that uh, allows this flexibility through time. So a matrix of uh, non geographical spaces that uh, allows uh, different uh, typologies from 40, 
60, 80 square meters, but also with the connection of different typologies uh, also uh, arriving to bigger typologies working as a cluster. And also defining the levels of participation. Once we have this structure, the certain options that each user can, def can define, but also what the, the furniture itself and a certain really light structures can um, characterize um, the spaces. And this was also essential to allow people to appropriate those spaces, but understanding that they are not the owners, in certain moment can change, a new user can arrive. So all this had to be established and set in the architectural terms, but also in a, in a manual of how to use um, the building. So all these uh, decisions were um, established in different workshops, um, workshops, uh, also using different materials, drawings, uh, and activities arriving to this kind of configuration of the different typologies and different units in each um, floor. And also how all this matrix uh, was materialized through, through um, CLT structure, but all the structure and the, the distribution of the spaces became one. Um, and uh, this allows us also to simplify a lot in terms of the construction, also to reduce the cost and make possible with a really low budget to introduce this material. And um, this is basically this uh, journey through the building that we are happy to say that just some minutes ago, we know that we are also shortlisted for the MIES and this is always really happy. And um, here is the ground floor with this passage and a cooperative of consumers. We can see this uh, multi-purpose room in the first floor arriving to the enter in the ground floor and the kitchen uh, and the park uh, below how these uh, common areas are articulated through the courtyard with the different um, flats and units uh, around. Uh, all the project is going to be finished through time. We can see kind of like the storage and the laundry, but it was also strategic to uh, make affordable. So how do we can define through phases um, the project, arriving to the terraces and these houses, the spaces of interaction and the units. Uh, naked spaces where each uh, user uh, was defining through time, arriving to these spaces interconnected with the south facade, these um, shadow systems that uh, protect this kitchen that we, we set a series of positions of the kitchen as kind of the more um, technical and defining uh, furniture, but all every user and in different ages and with your kind of history uh, in the back arrives and change um, the project. And basically after three years of conviviality and inhabiting Laborda, it's interesting also to, in a way, um, follow and monitoring, understanding also which kind of new um, strategies, what kind of new um, activities and practices can be implemented in terms of environmental performance, also in terms of the, the social activity with, uh, with collective dinners, um, done weekly but what it was also even more interesting was to see how the building was performing during COVID and how suddenly this idea of the household which was the space that we were um, isolated uh, then, uh, ourselves because in Spain we had almost three months of um, strong um, uh, lockdown um, the series of interactions that were emerging um, in between the people in terms of um, also that allows the, the mental health, but also allowing to collectivize uh, activities of care. So many protocols of care through elderly people, to the people who were suffering COVID, but also to the kids were establishing with different dynamics to understand how people was uh, feeling, what, what the community can, can, can do in these situations, and also how the different spaces and thresholds were um, used in many, many ways that I think we could never imagine such a spaces of uh, gathering from concerts, but also spaces of playing and also spaces of doing a uh, sport. Um, sorry, as uh, we can we can see here. So I think it was this idea of emancipation, this idea of taking the control. I think that uh, our kind of um, I would say kind of outcomes that I think we could never respect it. And I think that the people of uh, living in Laborda would more in, in value than, than, than ever. 
So this, I was, as I was saying, this was the pioneer experience. Um, we, as LACOL, we could also collaborate with another cooperative, Celobert, in the coordination of the housing plan from 2016 to 2025. So as I was saying, uh, the housing uh, problem was one of the main issues that the new government, Barcelona Comú, was facing. So many strategies to increase the affordable housing was implemented between them, the cooperative housing. So certain tools, a boarding table, and a series of competition for new land was established. And we had the opportunity to work with a new cooperative, um, La Valma, in a, in a new project. So, and this is here in the middle of Poblano, this industrial um, neighborhood in the opposite side of the, of the city. Uh, so this was interesting, interesting kind of place in an access of different facilities from elderly housing, youth housing, uh, a daycare center, a high school, um, health uh, center, and suddenly the cooperative housing as one equipment, one facility more in this access. And again, it was opportunity to systematize the process that we have done in La Borda and the, store, the, the species of participation, the process, and the role of each community to define their own uh, process. In this, in this case, this was a really smaller and really compact um, plot. And basically the surrounding was really important. This was a quite crowded ax, um, car um, street, which it was supposed to be the limit of the super block. So always with um, this driving and also with the kind of the noise of and the pollution of the of the cars. One high, the, the highest school really, really close to the facade. So the idea was how the circulations can be the threshold between the street, the pollution, the noise, and the housing. And in the in the higher level, the threshold and protection for the sun in the in the west southwest facade, which in our climate it's really really. Um, um, hot demanding, no? Uh, again, a good structure and uh, again, a flexible uh, system. And this is kind of the, the main uh, document of what it was for us really important, this idea of how we can make a reversible structure, how we can introduce in the middle of the technical services, bathrooms and kitchen, and how the corridors, which became the terraces, uh, are the species of interaction in a really uh, dense and vertical um, building. And how this is developed in the different floor plans. So the, again, the ground floor in relation with the surroundings, um, in the street, a, a commercial, um, a commercial um, uh, locals and commercial activity, and with through the park and this axis, the entrance of the building with the community space that it's also open to the community with a kind of two doors, and the access to the housing with. Um, with the stairs in these positions, allocating also community spaces in the corner, which is also the north facade. So all the units are in the west, east-west uh, orientation, arriving to the um, to the roof, to the to the terrace, which is in a really privileged area, also uh, looking to the to the sea. And also how this reversible structure uh, also us or we were also proposing a typology that can work in different ways. We can have um, a cross-sectional day, um, day area, but you can have also a day area allocated through the corridor. Also with typologies from one, two, and three rooms. And all these again with a series of elements that were kind of catalog with a catalog of elements and a manual to make people aware of the possibilities in order to take um, to take the, the um, options. And this is um, the wood structure with this kind of nuclear or kind of this access of installations, allowing really flexible um, areas in both sides. This is kind of reversible and the facade is what is changing. Also, it was a learning to, to use the wood in La Borda. And here we just basically uh, we turn it 90 grads, 90 grads, how it was working. So it's always a learning process in all the access from the social, constructive, uh, economic in the project. And since last June, the building is inhabited. Uh, this is this facade to this public um, access with the stairs and the, the common area uh, in the ground floor. And I'm looking forward to start looking, see how the people is inhabiting and how we can also start having these photographs 
about the these spaces um, use change finish because again this idea of the non-finished um, structure it's present and how these stairs open to the surroundings makes uh, these connections and makes like these movements between the common spaces to the lobby to the guest rooms which are always located in the north facade arriving to the arriving to the terrace and uh, all these corridors that became the terraces are also kind of giving like life and the activity and showing the interior to outside, but are also starting to be kind of uh, inhabited. And this is kind of the south facade with these kind of protections and how the users are starting to, to use this interstitial spaces and all these thresholds um, in a really kind of beautiful way. All this relation from the from the corridor to the to the interior, how also this connection between the neighbors and also again to redefine and to challenge these conceptions about the privacy, about um, which is a window and which is a door, kind of these ideas of the morality. So it's always something to discuss with the community and also how the trust uh, of the process allows to take all these kind of decisions and these kind of different kind of layers from the room to the kitchen to the living um, spaces. And this is the first time that I made, made I did this exercise to uh, to see what we are like having and working. No, here we can see La Borda, and this is La Balma. And uh, after those projects, um, the movement, the model, the so many municipalities, many communities started uh, to organize. And nowadays we are developing. And we are in process and ongoing of these six projects that we can see here from different sizes and in different locations. This is in Manresa, in the kind of the center of Catalonia. And it's interesting to understand how this, the six processes from the programs in the beginning, as I showed in La Borda, all these um, configurations in the different um, uh, plots that uh, we are working and how each community has their own kind of singularities. And for example, this is La Morada, the feminist housing cooperative that we are working. And this emerged uh, from a competition um, in a private plot where um, this group of uh, women, LGBTQ um, members wanted to visualize if there is a conflict to have access to housing or many, uh, uh, there is, um, I would say, kind of um, a problem to housing, but this is also really, um, there is a viage, a viage of gender on it. So they want also to build an alternative, visualizing how women are uh, the most precarious in many games, how LGBT people also uh, have um, a kind of a, a level um, of difficulty to have access to housing, but also how the housing and the community, it's an alternative in the distribution of care of those who want to look for alternative to patriarchal family. So it was interesting to understand also with the collaboration of PUNCIS, a cooperative, a feminist cooperative, the instrumentality of housing, the gender roles and the um, and, um, how the domestic realm was also uh, a core um, a place and basically how the definition of a program, the relation between um, the users, ask for a non hierarchical structure uh, of different configurations. And what it was really important in this project it was the position of the kitchen, where uh, also these reproductive spaces at home are usually like closed, um, are um, the, the less privileged. This wanted to be um, the biggest area of a space of relations. And in this project also the individual, the, uh, her or his body, uh, her privacy, her, her safety was really important. So the position of the kitchen close to the corridor as a space of interaction, as a space of, of gathering, but also the own room in the facade always kind of giving them the maximum privacy was something really important at the same time as the roof, as a space of gathering party and um, maximum freedom. And uh, this series of images also working with this transition from the ground floor and this idea of what you are looking when you are kind of crossing where you can meet and also um, something that I have been discussing um, this time. The Sudrak, which is the one that came from the third competition and the, the second competition that the municipality did, this was um, from 
people who was in the list expecting to enter to labor, but in a certain moment, the list was huge. So they organized themselves and create a new cooperative. And this in this cooperative, we um, it's really close to labor, we have similar conditions, and we uh, we uh, we establish kind of a more radical idea. So the democratizing the south facade, all the flats are looking to the south, southeast, southwest, but the south. And what is it was interesting is that um, to make there are kind of difference in terms of the size of the flats, but the main strategy is this uh, non this kind of rooms which can be collect collective but are um, satellites satellites room which are connect this uh, in a non uh, continuous um, so establishing a non continuous home so a place can, can uh, increase or decrease through adding these rooms but they will use the common areas to go to one of these spaces in the same floor in another floor so the use of this mechanism it was introduced but also the idea of a cluster. Um, I would say that after many of projects being established, being used, being shown, um, there is, um, it's easier to introduce or even for the people to imagine new ways of living. So um, in this community, a group of people who are living alone uh, wanted, but also some families wanted to, to have a bigger interaction. And also with looking for topologies similar to that in Switzerland, for example, in Zurich, in many of the projects such as Bona, the idea of the cluster was incorporated with this main space and units around uh, smaller than, than a kind of a current conventional flat. And this was possible also because a regulation of in in the housing and the in the habitability. Um, so a change in the habitability regulation was possible. So always through these experimental projects, we are pushing changes in the regulation and allowing new forms of living possible in the city. And this is this image with all the flats in the south facade and in the north facade, this series of rooms that can be used in different ways for different users. Nowadays, with this idea of the working from home and working remotely, many of the people were basically imagining just going in the other way of the corridor, but being in a way a bit far of the of the of, of home. And just to finish, one of the last one, which is Abril, where um, we are working with a really, really now narrow kind of uh, depth, which also asks for uh, different typologies, but also how we can also increase in vertical this basis of relation with a with structure which can uh, perform and change um, to trend. And also this transition from the street, from these uh, interior spaces, and the idea that also you're arriving and you arrive to the core of the community, which is these interior spaces, arriving to this uh, structure that aims to change, to expand, and to add uh, many kind of uh, levels and stairs, arriving to this uh, unit, which basically, uh, again, is the idea of a really flexible structure with the minimum a series of facilities in the north and west facade, giving the east and south totally free for rooms, living rooms, and many other ways of organizing the living um, space. And many, um, and here are all some of them, no? many kind of typologies from 2.5 to almost five or even more, sorry, seven. Well, many, many models that can be added and changed for a giving response to the many needs of the cooperative. And as I was saying, this is uh, growing in Barcelona and as a model and in Catalonia. And in parallel to the definition of the architectural projects, we were also involved in the definition of La Dinamo, which is a foundation for the impulse of cooperative housing, helping um, administrations, but also basically um, working uh, to reinforce the sector, the articulation of the, of the initiatives, and basically um, giving tools to the communities to transfer the knowledge, but also giving uh, alternative in a really consolidate. So understanding how plots, how communities, how building, how non-continuous cooperative can be, but also which is the role of the administration, how we can establish a real uh, formal and proper real uh, fr framework, legal framework, economical um, subsidies, making this uh, inclusive, uh, universal and replicable. And all this work is essential also as part of the definition of the architecture. Now again, this idea of the infrastructures as these conditions, these systems, these networks that are always um, important. And this was 
we would say, a big part of our activity, the definition of all those projects. But from Cambalio, as I was saying at the beginning, we started with this project of housing, but also the idea of implement again in an industrial premises, economical activity, and how this can be a counter proposal from the what is uh, more kind of, um, I would say kind of uh, the majority, or I would say kind of the, yeah, the majority of um, the economical system. And basically, this is uh, the city center of Barcelona. This is Gran Via Axis, one of the main um, streets. And in one side, uh, we can find Glorias and Barcelona Activa, which is the public um, service for entrepreneurship following kind of the capitalistic model. And it was interesting is how we can introduce also a, more, a, a kind of a hub uh, a point, a note, to implement the social economy in the city of Barcelona. So this is uh, how I began Coopolis, and basically is an uh, incubator of uh, social and um, solidarity uh, economy in the city of Barcelona. And here it's, as I was, the, 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 the name is that it's Coopolis, is the note in Campanillo, but it's following a, a, a program which was implemented from uh, in collaboration with the community. Um, the cooperative sector in the neighborhood and the Catalan government. So again, this co-production of policies to establish alternatives in the city. And uh, we, were, we were involved in thinking and defining this initiative. And we had the opportunity to um, introduce or kind of uh, the use in one of the blocks in Campagno is a meanwhile use, is a temporary installation. So basically the idea was to reuse the existing materials to develop this box to define a comfort zone in the middle of this uh, huge uh, space. Also developing some small interventions in terms of the roof, the facade. And uh, also as the activity was growing, just basically open walls and connect different spaces in the, inside the premises of this industrial uh, block. And we can see here, this was the first phase. And this is basically, we can, I don't have now the kind of the urban, but here we have block Onza. So basically this social center, this was the, the block uh, next to it. This was the first space where the different kind of technicians, the professionals uh, work here. And in the second phase, Basically, it was the connection with this space and the, this one um, below. This was a spaces um, for classrooms, for meetings and gatherings. And, and the, the third one was the incubator itself. So at the beginning, basically this was a space where the people who had an initiative just arrive, just have talks and meetings with the technicians and the professionals. Once activity was consolidated um, and the fundings also and the, the kind of the strategies uh, of operation was um, also clear, the activity was kind of increasing with this um, educational um, agendas. And basically here, this uh, space is also for the interaction from the, between the different, different projects. And what is interesting is that this is a space um, where also the construction was in the cooperation. Um, there is a carpentry, uh, a cooperative of carpenters. So it was an opportunity again to work and promote social economy in its process, always with this idea that this space will be moved to another way in, in certain moments. So always the minimum kind of physical and fixed intervention, but to giving the opportunity of those spaces to be used through time. And um, as we were seeing um, in, in terms of housing, it's not about developing kind of a close community. It's about developing a model, and in this uh, in this case, it's it's again the same kind of the, the same history. It's the idea that from Campanello, from the community, a proposal to the government and to the municipality was done. Coopolis and this agenda was kind of developed, and um, the Catalan government want, wanted to implement. This is a strategy in the territory of Catalonia in different different points, and it's beautiful because this is a, a map developed with for Arf, Ar, Arbac, which is a cooperative of architects that are located in Alvarez in an area uh, in the north of uh, Barcelona, and uh, these synergies between the territory 
the, um, the cooperative of architects, but cooperative for many other uh, sectors are working together to implement uh, the local, uh, the, the um, social and solidarity economy in the in the territory and articulating these counter proposals which are always essential for the right to the city and to in a way to put the life of the people in the center and not kind of the capital the benefits etc etc this kind of history that we all uh, know but all these spaces are trying to give a response to the current needs in the surrounding from the agriculture sector from, from kind of the the specificities of and singularities of each of the territories and in the case of Barcelona in uh, as um, activities that uh, emerge from um, coopolis, I would say that one is, of course, is the implementation of the economy, but the other one is giving response in terms of energy, in terms of migration, and uh, pro like conflicts or kind of challenges that we face um, in our cities uh, nowadays. And La Comunal is one of the outcomes. So La Comunal is a cultural a cooperative hub and wants to be understood culture as something that goes farther than kind of kind of an event, uh, a cultural presentation. It's, it's kind of the, the narratives and the relations uh, that are uh, produced in the city. And this was um, is a, a, story, a heritage protected building uh, that uh, was reconverted. And this is where La Col is allocated nowadays with um, lawyers that um, work for the human rights with cooperative a kind of newspaper, with a library, with the research uh, space and, and social economy, and many other projects that all together try to give um, uh, space for the surroundings, uh, connecting the street with this courtyard, with the different activities, but also um, understanding that also the possibility to, to, of, those, of the, all the projects to stay in the city with all the process of gentrification, it's also something kind of political. So these are st strategies and structures of resistance in terms of housing, but also in terms of economical and, uh, and production. And as all the facades were protected, basically we you, we use this in between as spaces, as environmental devices, as spaces to uh, put the installations, the stairs, the services, and um, the courtyard was um, limited with a party wall. So also giving uh, more activity and giving um, activity to the public space was important. So this was a new building added um, to give a new facade to, the, to this space. And we can see those spaces. As I was saying, kind of uh, again, this is a strategy of the greenhouse that also keeps energy in the end, the sun energy during the day. Also, the ventilations of the offices are done through those spaces, but also the stairs, the offices, and installations. Uh, in the, inside the, the, the spaces, the, the minimum is done, just kind of the actualization and update of these kind of structures and the activity of each of the users. And then this new building with meeting rooms, with these multipurpose rooms, which, also, which are also um, useful for, for, the, um, for the neighbors of the area. And so this was a project that came of these synergies, of these spaces of gathering, of these projects that were also needing a space and were also trying to, to cooperate in the daily basis. And the second one, because this is Camballó and this is La Borda, here is projected uh, Sutrac, here we can have Bloconza and Coopolis. Um, the idea was how to scale up all these initiatives, how we can uh, understand the management of the city in a bigger scale through all these experiences. We have developed a housing block, we have developed a productive or a cooperative hub. Um, we, as a community, we have a, a contract to manage all those area, all the community spaces of all those areas for 50 years, that how we can have uh, a major impact. And in a moment of climate emergency, in a moment um, of also, I would say, kind of extreme um, inequalities in the city, how we can uh, look to kind of uh, zoom out and, and look at our, our, the potential of what we have done and what we can uh, propose. And this is how um, we need to understand new protocols of urban transformation and management. And this project, the, which is kind 
taking as example the sandbox, like I said, of an urban laboratory where um, as a demand of the municipality, the engineers, environmental devices, uh, architects as Lacole, but also uh, sociologists, uh, anthropologists and researchers from cooperative sector were trying to envision which has been the history of Camballó and which can be the different uh, phases and potential uh, of it. Understanding which is the private, the public and the cooperative um, realms and zones, which is the, the highest, medium and low potential of all those areas to be transformed, understanding which agents are involved from academia, uh, cooperatives, administration, and the community, and understanding uh, as a harvest map, and I think in terms of energy, water, materials, um, even food, but also habit habitability, uh, economy, how um, we can redefine the fluxes and how we can start uh, to redefine a circular uh, system so a series of visions and ambitions, uh, so the set of strategies was presented to the municipality. As I was saying, in terms of water, energy, biodiversity, materials, mobility, habitability, community, and uh, social economy. And um, a set of uh, pilot projects were defined. And so with a calendar, with actions, and uh, with a plan of implementation from the rehabilitation of the um, of the existing buildings and to the self-development of the transformation of the current uh, industrial blocks uh, not being transformed yet, uh, understanding how um, the community can uh, go a step further even with funding, um, which is alternative product from the public sector, which I think are one of the, for me, most important, which is the forum of Camaglio, and something that this asks for a new model of governance. So the assembly of Camaglio, which has been involved in the management of the, the community spaces, have to grow with all the projects from, even from the housing, the private housing building, all the, the new cooperative and all the different activities include the public um, space and uh, which forms of organization, which is the role, uh, which is which are the actions and um, how this is uh, being developed you know, or implemented. And the first PNR project or the first pilot project, which uh, has already kind of begun, it's the, the local energy community uh, of Camaglio, which um, it's being promoted for Laborda and uh, Coopolis, but the idea is connect the public facilities, the private uh, buildings, looking for the opportunities in terms of also with the um, with, uh, European fundings, but in a way being um, self, um, with all, looking for the autonomy in terms of the energy, uh, energy uh, field. And all this is something that there are no structure. The structure is already there, it's the city and its uh, potential. So this idea of how the architects, we can be involved in the management and uh, the reconfiguration uh, of the resources. And of course, the economy, which is something that to make it viable, understanding uh, which are, uh, in our case, for example, the European funds and the next generations uh, for the next almost 10 years, for the, for the um, looking for responses to the, to the environmental uh, crisis. So I wanted just to finish after like the housing and the social economy kind of implementing projects with this, that this is something very different. And this is something that um, we were selected uh, with 19 teams. Um, so it's a total of 20 teams of architects, um, mediators, um, environmental consultancy, and a variety of um, agents in a pilot, pilot project developed by the, the housing, um, I would say from kind of the metropolitan area to deal with the more vulnerable communities. And basically this is a map which uh, it's an index of the vulnerability in the metropolitan area. And these are the more complexity zones. So basically the idea is that um, as, the, as, a, as a owners, the community has the duty to maintain its buildings are, and they are not uh, able, the, what the municipalities and this um, metropolitan agent it's implementing is a project, a public-private agreement to uh, 
allow these communities make a deep energy renovation, also make them possible to um, use also again these funds um, and at the end basically to make a better environment for them. But which is kind of the main uh, challenge is this relation with the communities. So next February, it's sorry, now it's kind of uh, exactly next February, we are starting uh, to work. And this is SANS, so which is where we have been looking. So here. And in Cornellà, which is no far from, from the office, we are starting to work. And this is, these are areas built during the 70s, 60s, 70s, high um, density, high rise, and um, with a vulnerable uh, community. So, which I think it's really important is how we are starting, and this is kind of the conditions in terms of energy, the situation of the buildings. So the, 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 exercises, the exercises or what the what the pilot project is asking basically is to present initial strategies to renovate facades, roofs, and um, some part of the public space uh, around to present kind of economical scenarios and establish um, the agreements and the like the different kind of protocols of implementation with the communities. So these are definitely, I think it would be challenging and it's um, something that um, for us in terms of the replicability, uh, uh, it's, it's really, really important. So basically I would say that for us, this idea of community infrastructures are trying to understand the role of the architect in this kind of ecosystem of agents that are involved in the, trans in the, in the transformation of the, urban, of the urban realm. So that's all, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Christina. This was fantastic, uh, an amazing lecture. Um, I think um, we can open the floor for a uh, few questions. Um, I don't know, Maniza, are you here? I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, can just people unmute themselves and ask the question? Do we have to do anything? Or? Um, if people can raise their hand, I can unmute them. Okay, great. I just raised my hand uh, physically and not, uh, <laughs> sorry for that, but just I'm in need of uh, leaving this uh, Zoom modality. Anyway, thank you so much, Christina. It's always a pleasure to listen to your uh, to your projects and congratulations because, uh, I mean, I, I think that the first time I uh, listened to a lecture of you, you had uh, less projects and it means that you are expanding a lot and these are really, really good, uh, good news. So I'm really, really proud of that. I mean, really proud. I'm really happy for you, mainly. Um, I have a question related to the the space in which you are actually working, in which you have your, your offices. If you can expand a little bit more about how this space uh, emerged, like uh, which is the, the, the policy that uh, underlie that kind of structure, which is the agreement that you have. I don't know which is the property of, uh, of the structure itself. And even I'm interested in... Uh, um, Knowing if it, I don't know if it's like really an open space, if uh, I mean people like freelancer are allowed to rent a, a desk, or I don't know if it's through a membership, if it's an association. So from a legal, let's say, point of view, what's the uh, yeah the contract that that underlies the structure? Let's say. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question because I really explain it uh, in in the, in the sense of the legal and the property. Um, this was interesting because, of course, Coopolis is a public space and uh, and Cambalio is uh, also a public realm. And as uh, we and other uh, cooperatives, it's kind of economical activity and it's something that we understood that it's uh, there is also kind of a benefit uh, in terms of. I would say that it's our own projects. We are always trying to have kind of a space, not like to separate. So um, basically the different cooperatives that uh, were located in different uh, rented spaces were looking for kind of a bigger uh, place. So this was an empty um, block in the middle of the neighbor, in the neighborhood. And we basically 
tried to discover who was the owners of those area. So this is a private, uh, it's a private block. And this is from a family that uh, has huge properties in Barcelona. And precisely because it was uh, with a heritage protection, they couldn't develop certain speculative projects that they were kind of wanted to do. So we made a counter proposal and we present our also our experience of art as architects, uh, and but also the legitimacy or even the kind of the, the, the history of the cooperativism in the area. And they were, in, they most, they show kind of an interest. And um, after many negotiations, we arrived to a contract, or oh, it's a rent contract, but uh, for five, 15 years plus five, plus five almost, so it's a 25, which also guarantee the possibility of the cooperative to evolve through time. And uh, when we established this contract and we started the project, uh, basically we were at the beginning three. So many projects of the surrounding basically was joining. And in that sense, it's open to uh, initiatives from the social economy. And also there are one only ONG. And um, I would say that the lawyers that are working in Iridia, who they are lawyers working in um, human justice, and they are not as a cooperative, but it's also some kind of nonprofit association. And in that sense, um, all together, we, we founded a second level cooperative, which is the ones that organize the space, which is the ones that also has the contract with the property. And basically, um, many associations and uh, projects from the surrounding are used on some of the common areas, the meeting rooms and the multiple purpose room. But now there are no more space for more projects because there is a total of nine nowadays. But well, I think that through time, we are also considering how people who are renting the spaces in their surroundings can also use kind of the common areas or also but the non-physical um, structures because there is also some kind of economical um, solidarity mechanisms, et cetera, et cetera. So basically this is kind of a non-public uh, project trying basically to share the access to a decent also um, professional commercial uh, renting, and also understanding how this can be open and can be replicable uh, also. But this is about the space. I know, it's super interesting. I'm really interested in looking at the cooperative approach into the production environment. I mean, the production field. So like living housing apart, how like this kind of structure can be based on a cooperative, uh, let's say, structure, legal structure that can, can provide services for the neighborhood that are like uh, uh, on top of, uh, of housing. So it's, uh, it's really interesting as a as a case study. And in that it sense, I think it's because at the end, in case of Laborda, for example, there is, this is a cooperative of uh, housing, but it's kind of a mixed cooperative, kind of in the legal kind of a status, is a mixed cooperative of housing users and consumers, which basically also put the focus on the possibility of the communities to consume also energy and other kind of um, services altogether, but also to even expand the, the the potential to others who are not inhabiting, but also can use the same kind of umbrella, which is the cooperatives. And this is also what is allowing this idea of the energy communities, because at the end, you are not reselling energy, which is kind of the main the thing that the, um, the regulation is blocking. So we are basically sharing the resources. So I think that the legal status and this idea of the, the second, second grad cooperative, but also if they are from workers, from services, from consumers and users, kind of they're kind of, at least in our legal framework, give the, pos the possibility of thinking all those um, opportunities that you are, you know, you are kind of saying. No? Yeah, 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 no, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting because the, 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 to, to me, the understanding today of a space of production is not only linked to the, to the work uh, part of your life, no? So uh, imagining and having like a structure that can provide different set of services that spans from the proper work, like a freelancer work, but like, I don't know, even like together with the work of a freelancer, there are many, many other activities that are like really, I mean, the, the division uh, in between work and non-work is really, really fragile. So this kind of structure led by a cooperative structure to me 
can be uh, is a nice key to, to let's say question like what's what's work today and so on so yes what you're saying is totally thank you Thank you very much, Christina, for, for the lecture. Um, I would like you to ask, uh, to ask you uh, whether you can elaborate a little bit on um, the scalability of the project that you're mentioning or the scalability of the system in relation to the pedagogical impact that these projects are producing at a city scale or a territorial scale, not only in terms, I guess, on um, architects learning new tools, which is something that you mentioned, but um, probably there's also a pedagogical effect on the administration, on dwellers of the cooperative housing units and people who are like getting uh, familiar with um, all this system and are like from knowing it to actually promoting it uh, themselves as being part, you know, being active in this kind of political project, which is embraced through architecture along with uh, many other professionals that you collaborate with. Um, yes, I think that uh, it was really interesting that during the development process of labor, in fact, the two main uh, committee groups active in the same moment was architecture and communication. And I think that um, basically the, the spread of the, of the experiences, the possibility um, of even visit um, them, and also all this process of um, systematization and sharing of the knowledge has been always kind of something crucial and in the aims of the cooperative and the different structure from La Borda, La Col, La Dinamo, on, on all the sector. And definitely, I think that the the, um, the improvement or even the increasement of the model during the, the last, I would say it's almost five years, no? And now there is more than 500 flats being uh, promoted in this model in Barcelona and surroundings. So all this is about, as you're saying, this idea of the pedagogy. And we, as architects at least, um, we, we had tried to um, to share all this knowledge in different kind of spaces from the academia to the administration. We have always been in contact with the public um, agency, trying to explain kind of the limits of the model, but also the potentials. And when they talk about the fear of the user, when they are talking about the conflicts of management. So I think that this kind of these interactions and these learnings are always, and uh, it's always interesting that the in Casol or many kind of all these agencies, Metropolitan and Catalan, uh, has had been really interested in the model and also had implemented um, even regulations, but also kind of pilot projects, but also even small changes in the conventional housing, public housing uh, development. So um, definitely, and but I would say that the main effort is not done by the architects, it's done also by all the cooperatives that are uh, understanding that the potential, uh, or not the potential, but also the responsibility to share uh, the work done and open kind of the, like the, um, the journey or kind of the the way to to the to other projects, no. But um, the cultural battle is I, I I can say it like this. I think it's the the biggest one, as I was saying, no, in Catalonia at and Spain with the culture of property, but also with um, um, yeah, kind of the the different structures also of regulation, economy, et cetera, and also the construction and real estate market. These are kind of the battles. And I think that the pedagogy in that sense, it's essential. And in the same time, all these models are also linked to all the social uh, services um, models in the sense that the aging population, which is something that we are facing because um, at least in Barcelona, also Spain, we are really, um, uh, uh, yeah, exactly. We are aging uh, social, uh, population. So all the distribution of care it, that it can be done in this kind of models is something important. No? So um, being also pedagogical in the different kind of faces or kind of access that all these process have, it's it's important. So many work to do in that. And I think that all together, you know, the different agents has, has the responsibility to do it. I don't know if I get to really respond to the question. Do we have any more questions from, from the audience? Just raise your hand and we will unmute you.
Anyone from, from the audience? Maybe I'll, I'll, I will try to, to, to ask a question that has to do with, because I'm, I'm reading also a, a comment by, by Tim in the chat uh, that has to do with, uh, with uh, basically the support that uh, these projects require from, from municipal or, or regional authorities. So I, I want to ask, uh, you know, if you can elaborate a bit on um, the incredible historic uh, context of Barcelona in the past decade, and thank God counting that uh, uh, not only allowed for these projects to emerge, but also provided uh, an incredibly uh, uh, supportive uh, ground, fertile ground to to expand, to be tested. I mean, I, I, you know, we've met many years ago and all these things were at the kind of beginning. And then in five years time, we see uh, an incredibly uh, important, uh, let's say, proliferation, experimentation, competitions, things that touch upon not just architecture and urban studies and urban design, but I would say social and economic experiments as well. Sorry to happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that um, as for me, always I said that the, the, without this, um, without this historical tradition, uh, at least in, a, in our area, in sense, any of these activities could be done. But of course, um, and also that's why also I want to introduce the 15M uh, as this moment of popular movement in the squares because it was also the beginning of Barcelona and Comú. So the beginning of this progress, progressive um, municipality that uh, also allowed to, to implement um, many of these policies. And uh, at the same time, uh, I think that the, the social movements and the people older than us that are surrounding um, us in all these projects, something that they learn from other moments for example, the beginning of the democracy was that uh, this trust for the politicians has, ha, there is kind of the risk to disarticulate um, the kind of the basis, you no, know, the roots. So in the moment where Barcelona Comú arrived to the power, um, many of them were part of the social movements. And, but it was really important. And they also asked for this, but also from the other side, it was important to counterbalance and understand how from the government they could pro procure and implement certain policies. Many of them were also proposals that arrived from, from the basis. And all this relationship was essential all the time. And um, this is something that uh, it was learned from the past. But at the same time, Many of the thoughts that it's really present now is that, of course, it has been a political um, kind of um, support, but at the same time, has been uh, from all the sectors, like from the uh, like the cooperative sector and also from the housing sector, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, really um, an importance to differentiate. And also, for example, in our case in Lacolna, always being working, always outside the administration, where there were also many uh, kind of uh, colleagues that in a certain moment were um, collaborating, were part of it. So this autonomy, these levels of autonomy was also really important. And it was the mechanism to, in a way, resist in a, mo in, in, in a certain moment if there, is a, in a, if there is a political change. So we are always understanding uh, this specific moment with the potential of consolidate and generate kind of a mass that in, in the case of a, of a political change uh, would have the power to resist and to ask uh, for a certain measures. No? And this is something that we have learned also, for example, from Uruguay and the cooperative housing model who resist um, a dictatorship and who now with also political changes are fighting. No? So I think that's also this balance and this relationship is essential. But of course, 
Um, we have been now in a really sweet moment of support, of kind of fertile um, context. And I think that we will have to be really conscious about um, the future and the different kind of uh, hypothetical moments that can, can arrive. Maybe a follow-up question is about the, the, the value of, of pilot pilot plans as well, because there's a, uh, I think a very important value discussing, of course, you know, forms of education or, or engagement with communities and cities and, and institutions, right? The, the, I think you, it is, it is very clear that Kanabatio is, is a case study. It's, it's the pilot plan that has affected and, and has an impact in multiple scales in multiple locations, not just in Barcelona, but I guess in, in Catalonia as a whole. So, um, why do you think this happened? I mean, it was, uh, of course, has a lot to do with you know the various actors and and the people that and the groups that they were in, engaging with the project. But I'm wondering if there are, in your opinion, other reasons as well, uh, the history of the place or, or a coincidence, even or, or you know, things, events that happened in the past mm -hmm. ten years. Well, some people in the neighborhood always say that, of course, kind of this coincidence that suddenly there has been a group of researchers that before they were squatters that were starting to study the neighborhood and how they developed this uh, cooperative neighborhood project uh, almost 12 years ago, that it was kind of the theoretical framework to, to set kind of uh, guidance. But also some of them are also really conscious that even the, the role of the architect and what we have done is the idea of the, to be supportive in the materialization of the project and also to give a certain strategy um, has been essential at the same time. All this set of knowledge in a table facing the municipality, I think that also has been essential no? because many, in many situations there is neighborhoods and communities that deal in a certain conversation with the municipality has not an equal knowledge I saw the language, but also kind of the skills, et cetera, are um, in a kind of an disadvantage, in this, this disadvantage. So in the case of Cambodia, with all the different, um, this heritage um, from, the, from the history, but for with this uh, uh, really uh, political initiatives, such as the Zipla, which is this cooperative uh, of researchers, but also to be, architects such as members of LACOL and, and other neighbors that are also architects seated in the table. And as Marino Otero says, you know, this idea of to generate new tables and I said the, the old ones obsolete. Uh, obsolete. And this is this idea. You know? And I think that in that sense, the people involved in the discussions, but also always being propositive. And I think that is something that has been also different. In many situations, the communities um, has been always as in you know, a as in a as a, a claiming or in a, in a position of the of the established plans, you know, the plans from the municipality for an area, and then the community are against that. Here, we in a way, we turn it. So basically, we were propositive and we arrived to the city hall or to the municipality saying, this is the plan, uh, the community has this alternative. And suddenly they look in another way, in a, in a certain moment, in the middle of the economic crisis, in the middle of this em emergency crisis, uh, environmental crisis, sometimes they don't have ideas or they don't know how to do it. And this is the moment where they started to listen and to implement the ideas. So I think that this propositive um, attitude has been, has been essential. And of course, in, in for example, last year in the University of Alvallès, uh, one close to Barcelona, they had a group of uh, students working all the year in the potential of the sandbox, of this idea of the laboratory, the limits, looking for references, being present here, talking with neighbors. So of course, the interaction of the academy, and that's why in, the, in this diagram of Asians, the academy, the university is there. So, because also enrich this uh, set of ideas uh, for the community. So I think that always there is kind of a balance. In certain moment, one old neighborhood, neighbor with a lot of um, experience said, it's always phases of um, construction and phases of claiming. And this is something that it's in, in this, this way 
Uh, one time and another one. So we are in a moment of constructing in many uh, ways, but um, well, the propositive active is one of the key tools. And I think the role of the architect here, it's also as other uh, Asians, but is essential. Amazing, thank you. Do we have any, any more questions from, from the audience? Ilaria, yes. Hello. Hi. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Sorry, I cannot, we, so, we cannot see you, but we can hear you. Yeah, I'm not able to do that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, thank you for your presentation. It was really inspiring. Uh, I have just one doubt. Let's say I want to ask your opinion about the um, difference, if there is one, between social housing and cooperative housing. And I mean, I understand, but I uh, would like to, to know your point of view. And also, if you think there are some limits in terms of democracy in the cooperative housing model that uh, I really appreciate, but I think um, it's not super clear to me how uh, the um, formation of the cooperative uh, happen and take place. And I would like you to can explain that. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't understood the first question, the, the difference between the cooperative housing and the social housing. I mean, if you think um, the cooperative housing process um, has some limits in respect to the social housing, uh, I, don't, I don't know, like, that's my doubt. In, uh, the yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No, I think it's, it's a really, really important question, and I appreciate it because, of course, um, in this first phase of the development of the model, um, these projects uh, ask for a huge level of uh, kind of implication, time and effort uh, by the users, by the future inhabitants, or at least in the model that we have been implementing because they are totally self-managed. Uh, so this is asking two or three kind of um, conditions. One, it's also the time. So some people, because of the condition of Mono, like families of one adult, people who have a kind of a vulnerable situation, et cetera, et cetera, are possibly not allowed. And possible, possibly many of these people um, are not even in contact with the cooperative sector, with the initiatives that are emerging. So it's difficult also even sometimes to enter one of these groups. So um, the, the, the model is looking for different tools to give respond to that. So in that sense, there is a cooperative which is called Sostra Civic that basically is allows, is kind of, it's um, a project that has a list of people that are interested and have access to the information in order to start a new, co a new community, for example. Because in the sense of La Borda or Sutrac or some of the others, it's people that, are sharing different projects, are being uh, organized, sometimes related with um, LAPA, which is the, uh, the platform uh, for evictions, et cetera, et cetera. So different kind of, in the social movement is different projects and came around and go uh, together to implement. So of course there is the risk to not be accessible, uh, inclusive as an universal. So that's why so many of the strategies of the model nowadays are working in this direction, how we can um, have more policies, how we can have uh, subsidies to make more general the model, to more accessible in terms of information, economy, et cetera, et cetera. And at the same time, um, I think that in that sense, the cooperative housing has in, been introduced in the in the housing plan as a one alternative or one of the the lines of work to increase the affordable uh, housing in Barcelona, but not the, the only one, because of course there, there are profiles and people who need another, another kind of access. And that's why, for example, there is social housing for renting. And this is basically through the public um, agency and through the public kind of offices. But also there is emergency housing for people who really don't have um, really, really low incomes, but also really vulnerable situations. So in that sense, of course, the profile that nowadays is having access to the cooperative 
they fulfill the criteria for social housing in the sense that they don't have properties, they don't have um, a certain level of incomes, but in a majority, they have a high level, cultural level, level of education, which is not always um, the, um, the radiography of the situation in some of the neighborhoods that where they are emerging. And in the same time, many of the cooperatives are trying to implement internally different uh, mechanisms to increase um, the diversity, to make it more uh, accessible, trying to make solidarity mechanisms for people who cannot afford it, or trying to establish criteria in, for the entrance of people who uh, are exact families of one other, migrant, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think that as the model is quite new, the, nowadays there are kind of contro controversies and also critiques about it. And I think that all of the sector me, Lacole, we are quite conscious about all of that. And many of the actions that we are doing precisely is for working about that. But at the end, um, it's one of the models in that sense. You know? I think social housing is huge and um, the mechanisms that they are that, that the public administration has are um, many. That's why it's only kind of a, a small um, piece in the cake, you know, I would say. I hope I answered the question, Hilaria. <laughs> um, yes, she's saying thank you very much. So I think she. Yeah, it's very <laughs> Great. Um, are there any more questions? I think we have time for one more. If there is a, anyone that wants to ask something. It seems not. So, um, Christina, thank you so much. Um, it was a, an incredible presentation, um, a fantastic contribution, and um, it's really uh, the best way to start this uh, public series organized by our program. Um, so, thank you so much, and also congratulations for the amazing news to be um, shortlisted for the Mies van der Rohe. Um, that's uh, an incredible honor for, for the practice, I guess, but also for all of us that we, we know you and we, we work next to you. Thank you, and we'll see you all next uh, week. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank you all.